We're here at INSEAD's Asia campus, uh, where the INSEAD Forum is currently going on. One of the keynote speakers is Hubert Sanier, the CEO of Essilor International. Thank you for being here. Hello, Ben, how are you? For those who are unfamiliar, can you give us a brief introduction to Essilor? Yeah, Essilor is a leading, uh, actually, high care company uh, with a strong mission, only dedicated on vision. Obviously, the origin of the company was actually to invent, create, produce uh, eyeglasses. We did that uh, in a very efficient way for basically uh, 150 years. But at a point, it became very obvious that no government, no big organizations was able to, to provide solutions for better vision for the 4.5 billion people who need eyeglasses. And out of, th uh, out of those 4.5, um, 1.7 billion only have access to, vi to, uh, to products, 2.5 have no access. Someone has to do something to stop that. And we at Essilor, we took that as really our main mission, which really means actually to provide 50 million eyeglasses to 50 million people every year. So. It has started here in Asia because this is really where we have the, the, the biggest population of people in need for, for, for better vision. And we decided a few years ago, seven years ago actually, to create a specific department called the Essilor Mission with one of the key leaders, CMO, uh, Chief Mission Officer in charge of developing inclusive business model in order to basically make, provide a living to thousands of people by selling them eyeglasses, readers, sunglasses at a minimum price and then develop a living for themselves while at the same time um, enlarging the access and making eyeglasses more affordable and more available everywhere in the world. And you had mentioned that you, you not only provide the eyeglasses, you also provide training to the people so that they sort of become opticians in, in, in a sense where they are. Yeah, because you know, when we talk about correcting vision, basically everything starts with an eye exam. To do this first step of an eye exam, basically we are able in two months to train them, not make them an eye care doctor, but really make them someone who with the right accuracy could take those measurements and define the right lens that we need to put in front of your eyes so you can see well. And we have developed a program called iMitra, which means in Hindi, the friends of the eyes. Uh, they make a living. They are a network that we manage as a network of distributors. The point is they are social distributors giving access in extremely remote places where there is no opti opticians or optical shops. What are some of the main obstacles that you face? So the first really obstacle is the mindset. Uh, when we are sometimes in China, in China, in some remote countries, the uh, regions, the mother with having a kid uh, with myopia, they believe that eyeglasses will accelerate myopia because it's a disease. Of course, we have to face also technical challenges because when you have this objective of finding ways to reach 50 million people everywhere in the world and correcting their vision, you need a very, very cheap product. And you have a supply chain at an extremely low cost. And it took us basically a year and a half, two years, capitalizing on all the knowledge of the R&D within Essilor to develop a specific product uh, at that cost that actually is now distributed in through all those networks. And I think, you know, looking at it just at first glance, it might seem difficult to make a business case for a margin that small. Um, what is the long-term the long business case of the program? In the next few years, they will improve their life because they see well and they will make a better living. And once, one day along the, their life, their vision may change, they will find a way to spend maybe $5 on a pair of eyeglasses, and maybe one day 10 
of 15, in 10 years, 15 years. So yes, we are also at the same time creating the next generation of our consumers. What are the main ways in which uh, Essilor is evolving uh, in line with digital technology? Huge change when we talk about uh, digitalizations. The first one is awareness. The first one is access to communication, access to information. Uh, through the little device you have in your pocket, <laughs> you have access right away in two clicks to basically the visual defect and the solutions. People suddenly are aware and we, on all our website, informative websites, we have seen the huge increase of number of clicks. People spending time wanted to know why they see badly, why their kids have issues. So it increased the awareness a big, 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 big time. Second is accessibility. Because in some remote countries, people have smartphones, they have internet access, and they can purchase eyeglasses, and they do. So it has, giving a, it has given a big, big reach, actually, as far as accessibility to get eyeglasses. Uh, now the next big generation as far as digitalization and innovation is the day when you and I, we will be able to check our vision using an app on our smartphone. Or having an app on our smartphone where you can read the existing eyeglasses you have, so you can order another one. Those days are coming next year. These apps that are coming, um, are they mainly the result of acquisition, uh, in-house R&D? No, they are the results of a big contest. We have launched to uh, apps developer of the world basically six months ago. And as we speak, we're in the middle of looking at the answers. You could see that on our websites as a sea change programs. And this will be announced by year end or early Q1. Obviously, you know, the world's changing, companies need to change and it's very difficult and perhaps in unprecedented to be in a situation of constant change, at least at the pace we've seen it these days. Um, what are the challenges of that and how do you meet them? It's, it's very complicated and it's very complicated specifically when uh, for a company like us whose growth engines are providing business models, developing model on the, from the red ocean to the blue ocean um, uh, but at the same time, uh, second level of growth being acquisitions and equity partnerships, which has been really one of the biggest engine of growth for the company. We identify talents, we identify talented uh, small or mid-sized companies, family businesses everywhere in the world, and we take a majority of equity of this company. And then along the lines, so Essilor grow and continue to grow and continue to grow. Any last words, anything you want to leave us with? Go and see your eye care doctor ASAP if you have not done that in the past 12 months. Everything start by that. For you, your kids, your family, make sure you see well. Hubert Sarnier, thanks so much. My pleasure. <laughs>